מצח אותך אני זוכר וכבר מאז איתי וידעתי שלא אוותר כי לי היית בבת עיני שלום 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 My name is Michael Sano and welcome to this episode of the 12 cities in Israel podcast um, the only positive podcast on the state of Israel welcome to this episode episode number 12 before we get started I'd like to read a couple messages from our sponsors one thank you so much for supporting us our first one is from I connect I I connect engagement with Israel that earns you rewards earn points and connect with Israel with articles games quizzes polls and more so what exactly is I connect well I connect is a social gaming platform where you can play earn points and receive cool prizes all for free their goal is to help you stay connected with Israel no matter where on the globe you are so I Head on over to www.iconnect.co.il. That is www.iconnect.co.il and start playing now. Our next message is from Israel Phones, which is the leading provider of Of communication devices for people traveling to Israel Israel phones offer sim cards myFi devices which are mobile Wi-Fi hotspots travel products and serves the connectivity needs of tour groups synagogues schools community missions study programs and individuals supplying you with international prepaid sim card cell phones and USB portable modem hotspot rentals and Right now, because of watching this show, Israel Phones will give you a free SIM card. What? Which is a $15 value if you spend $30 or more on their site. All you have to do to get this deal is to use the coupon code 12 cities in Israel. That's the number one, two cities in Israel. All one word, no spaces when checking out on your next order. For more information on what Israel phones can do for you and to get this great deal, please visit www.israelphones.com. That's www.israelphones.com. Okay, welcome to episode number 12. Now, number 12, episode 12 is, is big. So um, why is it big? Because 12 cities in Israel, come on. And make the correlation, the symbolism. Episode 10, of course, was big because, well, we completed 10 episodes, which is pretty awesome. Um, that shows discipline and hard work. Well, episode 12, I don't know. Just think it's kind of fun. And I want to talk about something um, on this episode that I think is going to be really, really interesting. Um, it is about... The phrase that I use at the beginning of this, a positive podcast. Now, before we get into this, I have to say one thank you to Reuven and the Revivo Project. Rock on, guys. If you are curious who I'm talking about, you've heard them before, and you listen to them in the intro to this podcast. I choose a song from their catalog um, as the intro and outro music and... This is all because they have been gracious enough to give us um, permission to use their music in our podcasts and with the rest of our videos. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Support them. It is my opinion that they are Israel. Um, they're, to let you know, it's, it's Mizraki music. If you're curious uh, what the style is, some of you are... Of course it's Ms. Rocky music. I know it's Ms. Rocky music. Well, some people don't know, and that's why I'm here to give you the straight dope. So um, the interesting thing about Ms. Rocky music, and I should really, really do an episode on this, is that um, for a long time it was underground. And it was, you would go to, uh, you could get tapes, Ms. Rocky tapes. You could get them at the McCollet. Um, which is like, for those of you in New York, um, it's like a bodega. Okay. Um, and it's where you can get all this stuff. It's in a Macaulet and it's, it's where you can get, uh, coffee, 
can get your smokes, you can get milk, all that stuff. Um, but early on in the day, you could also get Mizraki tapes. And these were artists who uh, weren't really recognized by the Israeli music industry. Uh, so that, again, I'm going to go into that because I have to do a little bit of research on that because that's that's a fun topic because it ties into a lot of the tensions over the history of this state between uh, um, the Mizrahi Sephardi and the Ashkenazi uh, residents of the state of Israel. So that'll be a fun episode. Um, but, wow, I didn't even think of that. That totally ties in with what I'm talking about. What? Mind blown. So, um... All right, how do I start this? I start this by talking about the interviews that I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to be traveling to Israel in January again. Oh, darn. Too bad. So sad. Um, I'm going to be going there in January. I'm going to be staying at the C Executive Suites. Got to plug them. C Executive Suites, www.sea-hotel. Dot co dot il. I got it right this time. Um, we're going to be staying there and we're going to be interviewing because the podcast has gotten to a point and I knew this was going to happen. Um, the podcast has gotten to a point where I can only, I'm giving you a perspective from me. Okay. Um, and what do they say? They say you have to cite three articles right? When you're in college, you have to cite three articles for a paper. So I'm one article. Okay. And that's not enough. You're going to get an F on this paper. So what I'm doing is, uh, in order to give a better, larger perspective on Israel, um, I'm going to Israel and I'm going to be interviewing, uh, 24 people. So I have eight of them now, so last episode, and this is such awesome news, um, last episode, I, I didn't shame. I did not shame, and I will not accept that. Um, yeah, self-guilt. Can anyone, can anyone feel it? Um, there's loads of it. Uh, hope the camera is not picking it up. Um, so I pointed out that a couple of the potential guests that I had reached out to um, had said no to coming on. Um, and I, one of them had said, I don't feel like, what did he say? I don't feel like I would be a good fit for your podcast. And I, I was curious about that, especially with, with the work that this person does. He, he does some fabulous work and I can't tell you who it is right now because it just wouldn't be right um but he responded to me and said I don't know if I would be right because I have a love-hate relationship with Israel and the Israeli people and I was, I was, I was like, okay, all right. And based on his work, I have a good understanding of why he feels this way. Um, but I felt that it was, it was still important to get his perspective because I'm going to read a quote. Um, and I love this quote. This is one of my favorite quotes ever. Um, it is frankness is the sustentative component required in a diet of learning that leads ultimately to true objectivity. And what that basically, you know, who wrote that, you know, who, who wrote that, um, that, um, quote, uh, it's really, really, really profound, important person. Um, and, and, uh, yeah, it was me. Uh, <laughs> I wrote it. Everyone gets a quote. I want that one. That one sounds cool. So, um, uh, Basically, what I'm saying is that uh, honesty is the most important component um, that you need 
in order to uh, learn everything that you need to so that you can be as objective as possible. So in objectivity, true objectivity is difficult. It's absolutely difficult. Like, like uh, one of the things that we struggle with here in the United States is the concept of justice. And let me take a sip of coffee. Peter, this is for you. This is the coffee. Oh, my gosh. Hold on. Mm. So one of the concepts that we deal with here in the United States is we like to throw around the word justice, 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 justice. Um, and I remember I was a little kid, really little kid at elementary school, and we went on this uh, school class trip. And we went to the old state house in Hartford, Connecticut. And inside the old state house, they had the original statue that stood on top. And the old state house on top of it had this statue of Lady Justice. And they went to great pains to explain why she was blindfolded, why she held scales, all of this stuff. And justice literally 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 means nothing more than equal representation under the law that means that that doesn't mean that laws are right laws are just laws are whatever um it means that justice is devoid of moral it is literally in the wording I, 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 I'm not, I swear, I am not digressing. This is important. This is an important point. So a lot of people say, well, that's not right that that person got convicted of X. Well, then the solution would be change the law, not, not prosecute because the laws are the foundation. Um, so now I, Actually, no, I am digressing. But anyway, so this was profound for me. This was important because it taught me that, um, oh, no, it taught me that uh, the law in its purest form is absolutely 100% objective because it's applied across the board. Interpretation of the law is allowed, but its application needs to be objective. So, Think about that. Think about that. So um, we are being judged, okay, in the larger sphere. Are we being judged objectively? Um, think about Israel. I, and this isn't Israel advocacy. This is, this is Israel objectivity, I guess. Um, are, we, are we judging Israel um, in the same, with that same criteria? I don't think we are. Um, because a lot of times, so this is, this is actually funny. And I, I, how am I, how did I get here? Um, so think about the sentencing phase. The sentencing phase is where you get people for or against to come in and state on your behalf. Okay. Um, the way things go right now is that we don't have anyone and Israel does a horrible job of this, of stating its case on its behalf. I, it's funny because it goes into, my wife and I were talking about this, it goes into the, uh, the, this pattern phrase that's inside the Israeli consciousness. And that is obviously, obviously. Uh, they say obviously to everything. They say nakon, which is correct. And then they'll say in English, Obviously. So did you go to the grocery? Obviously. Did you, why did you guys, I, I feel like, the, obviously. Everything is obviously. And obviously does not explain everything. It, 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 it just confuses. So I think that's what Israel has this mentality of we should just understand all of the good things that they do. We should just, we should have the discipline to do the research to understand the most about a situation. The problem with that um, line of thought is that 
human beings <laughs> routinely do things to limit the amount of things that they have to do. So that sounds counterintuitive, and it is, but it is the truth. Um, we're always looking for ways to shave time, shortcut, relax, do whatever we can instead of most likely what we're supposed to be doing. Um, Israelis work very hard. Israelis uh, can tend to be very disciplined. Um, Americans tend to not be tremendously disciplined in the things that they do. Um, that's not a knock. It's, hey, I, I've i seen it. I was in the military for 10 years, okay, I, and then went to college, and I have seen the level of discipline among the average American, and it's it's it's, you know, it's pretty low. I wonder, I don't even know where that comes from. Um, it's something that's been lost because that discipline was something that existed a number of years ago. Um, but that's not the subject of this podcast. The podcast is, uh, about the subject of this one is about what positive, a positive podcast about Israel actually means. So, I brought up this individual who's coming on to the show, um, and he was concerned that a lot of the things that he was saying, a lot of the um, issues that he had with Israel and the Israeli people wouldn't be conducive to uh, what I'm trying to do here. And um, I, I sent him back a prolonged, a really well-written email, I think, um, if I don't say so myself, um, about how warts and all is the best policy. So, um, how do I, this, the, all right. So this is going to sound like a digression, but it's not a digression. So my, it gives you, it, it will give you insight though, into my thought process and my mental process. And this is important because this will give you better understanding into what I'm trying to do. Um, so I told you guys I have issues or have had issues in the past with anxiety and stuff like that. So the Michael Sano mental health show, that is not what this is, but I have had issues with these things. One of the best exercises I have found for alleviation of this anxiety and maintaining a better calm, a better feeling, a better view on the world as a whole is by, and it's important, it is not the suppression of the negative, <clears throat> But the unwillingness that I personally have for giving the negative um, increased precedence in my life. Um, my, <clears throat> all the positive things in my life, all the positive things in my day are super, are, are supersede in every way, shape, or form all the negative things. Does that mean that I'm not affected by the negative things? No, absolutely. A couple of podcasts ago, I said something about how I was talking to someone else and explaining that failure is important to me. Failure is something that I almost look forward to. I don't know, that, that that may not be the right phraseology. It's not necessarily that I look forward to it because I don't want to fail. Um, but inevitably, in certain things, I will fail. Um, I have a number of things that are going on right now, almost too many to handle, and I know some will drop off. Um, but I'm working very hard to ensure that all of them succeed. If they do fail... What's awesome about that is I get an absolute blueprint for how to fail at something. So I don't know if you've, what I'm trying to think, how would I, so have you ever tried to do something and you've looked it up on the internet and it gives you like five things to never do, five things to never do if you want to lose weight. So 
I am continuously generating these five to 10 things not to do list. And most people would, would look at this failure and they would say, well, you failed. Bottom line, you failed. Your failure. Just, you know, second place is first, pla- first place loser, you know, and whatever. Okay. Because I know that the next time I have more tools in my tool shed to help me succeed because I have failed. What happens so often is that we come up with these new ways and new ideas, but we never go back to that tool shed and look if we have those failure tools to do better. Then that's one of the things that um, not just Israel, uh, but everyone does. Every country does that. Um, even the worst, even the best. So... One of the things that Israel is, I think, personally failing at right now is um, self-promotion. You know what I mean? Uh, look at individuals who, are, who, who can just promote themselves outstandingly. Kardashians, okay? Um, the Kardashians self-promote amazingly. The Israeli government could learn a thing or two about that. Yeah, there are things that you can, you know paying the uh the kardashians for but in general you know i think they've done a great job they've been very successful they have the bank accounts to prove it um not that that's the litmus test of success but overall there are yes there are haters there are always going to be haters oh my gosh and i'm probably going to get to that later on in this episode but the bottom line is there are more people in the United States who love the Kardashians. And let's let's be honest, there are more people in the world who love the Kardashians than hate them. And even those that hate them secretly want to be them. So haters. Um, but so Israel, what are you doing? What are you doing? Why aren't you why aren't you self-promoting? I did a video called Why I Love Israel. Please, 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 please. Go watch it. I guarantee if you watch this video, you're going to find out a ton of things that you had no earthly idea Israel did or was a part of. Or, uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, so that's my purpose. That is what I'm doing. I'm trying to apply my life view to Israel. Okay. Um, what does that mean? Well, at, we are right about on the half hour. So what I'm going to do is I, I want to explain this so bad. This is so good. This is good stuff, man. This is me. Um, but I'm going to have a sip of coffee. I'm going to read a couple more messages from our awesome sponsors sponsors that my son absolutely loves um and you'll know why in a moment and then i will get to applying my perspective on positivity to israel so give me one moment okay our first one are you ready is from our friends at Neviot, Neviot flavored water. Nature at its best taste. Neviot delivers you with a true combination of health and pleasure. Based on Neviot natural mineral water, one of its kind in Israel, it's enhanced with five B group vitamins. It's naturally sweetened. It is low in calories, only 35 to 40 calories per eight fluid ounces. There are no preservatives, no color additives. It is available in delicious, indulging flavors, apple, peach, and grape. This is apple right here. Get into it. If you're in Israel, you should be drinking Neviot. For more more information, check out their website at www.neviotglobal.com forward slash en forward slash home. That's www.neviotglobal.com. 
dot com forward slash en forward slash home. This stuff is awesome. My son gets it at the at the end of every episode. It's why you never see me crack it. Uh, <laughs> he lives for it, and he is such an awesome kid. He's fifteen years old. Robert, you are my prince. Um, he, uh, yeah, he lives for it, and everyone I know who's ever tried it um, loses their mind. If you want to get this water, head on over to our next sponsor. Makolet Online. Makolet Online's main goal is to make Israeli groceries and Judaic products affordable and available to everyone in the USA and Canada. Their online store carries items that are unavailable in most places in North America. Things like tahini, Israeli chocolates, frozen barakas, and the Neviat water that we are drinking here today. At Makolet Online, you will find your favorite Israeli goods or simply enjoy brand new flavors all of their products are kosher, and most are manufactured in Israel. If you want the tastes of Israel delivered to your home, visit www.makolatonline.com and order today for an added bonus. Are you ready for this, guys? If you use the code 12 cities in Israel, the number one, two, all one word, no spaces, you will receive 15% off of your entire purchase. Yes, I use it. Go there, use it now. So again, visit www.makoletonline.com. That's www.makoletonline.com in order today. And today, from Makolet Online... We have, thank you, Liam, for the care package, Elite Must Sugar-Free Reduced Calorie Lemon-Flavored Hard Candies. Now, you can go get hard candies, but why would you when you could get Elite? Because Elite are kosher. These are kosher hard candies, folks. For those of you, if that is a concern, head on over to Macaulay Online. And try them out today. Um, let me see. What is this? Uh, I'm going to sneeze. I don't want to sneeze. 40% fewer calories than regular candies. Um, these are awesome. They are. Um, but they may contain traces of wheat, soy, and milk. But they are produced on a kosherized line where items containing milk were produced as well. They are... Kosher Lemehadrin Parve. Parv, Parv. I, I always say that one wrong. Um, sorry. Um, but yeah, hit it up. They're awesome. Um, I know my son's gonna tear through them. I will tear through them. Um Hi, how's it going? Yes, thank you, Makolet Online. Thank you, Neviot. Um, and thank you, Liam, and all you guys. Uh so where was I? I was talking about the applications of my positive view on Israel. So, 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 so. So I got this email from this guy who is going to be a guest. I'm so excited. He, I can't, I can't really tell you what he does because if I tell you what he does, you're going to know exactly who he is. And I kind of want to keep it under wraps. So, but he was concerned. He was concerned that he would not be the right fit because at the beginning of my show, I say this is a positive podcast on the state of Israel. Well, I explained in the beginning, in the first half, that um, objectivity, being honest, and all of that leads to objectivity. And that's the most important part. And I believe that honesty is a positive trait. I believe that objectivity is an honest is a positive trait. Negative things happen in the world. Negative things need to be addressed. You can address them positively. I think honest conversation is positive. My point being just because it's a positive podcast doesn't mean that we can't talk about real issues that have negative implications, negative ramifications, all of that. I think that speaking about them, 
um, in an honest, objective way, brings all of that positivity and allows for movement towards a more positive resolution. I am throwing a positive, positive, positive. Why am I doing this? Because there, there are different ways you can do it. A lot of people love to, and, and the, the, uh, what is it? Cause I had a friend of mine. I'm, I'm a psych minor. Uh, I'm a Jewish studies major, but I'm also a psych minor. Um, and it's ugh, one of the most frustrating things in the world because I was a double major at city college and I wanted to graduate and I did not want to stick around for the two classes that I needed to get my major. Oh my gosh. It was so annoying. So, um, I am basically a psych major without the major. Um, and I had a lot of debates about this subject with individuals who were faculty at the city college of New York. The only one who understood where I was coming from was Dr. Anne Marie Yali shout out. She is a social psychology professor. And I took a course with her that I got a D in because I had knee surgery and couldn't commit myself. It's the only class I ever got a D in. Wow, you want to talk about honesty? Woo! That made me nauseous when I got that grade. Um, I've never gotten a grade that low in my life. It was disgusting. Um, so, but I was having a lot of conversations with her about this subject and about how I felt positivity you should acknowledge the negative. You you absolutely should acknowledge the, neg the negative. There are a lot of issues that are going on. There are a lot of problems societally um, across the board in Israel. But does that make Israel ba a bad place? No, not at all. Um, in the same way that there are societal problems in the United States, but the United States is a pretty great place and people are clamoring to come here. Um so what, what, what comes is you, you, you inadvertently, because we are human beings and it is human to anthropomorphize everything. It's, uh, it's actually the reason why this is going to sound totally unrelated, but it's not. So you know how everyone says, oh, there's a picture of a ghost and you could see the face in the window. It's because the human brain is set up to see socially. Okay. So because of this, because of this phenomena that the human brain is set up to see socially, um, we apply human traits to inanimate things and structures and concepts. So therefore we moralize. Okay. So this is bad. This is good. This is bad. This is good. And objectivity gets lost. Okay. Um, it is important. There are some things that are bad and we've written very specific laws against those things to keep them from happening. Um, and we could probably write a couple more. Who knows? Um, but my point for saying all of this, my reason for bringing this up is that we routinely um, vilify things that I don't know should necessarily be vilified. Um, hold on. Wait a second. Let me take a sip of coffee because I think I've gotten off the point. This is a really difficult subject because I'm talking about something that exists in my brain. Huh. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is just because there are problems and issues doesn't mean that we can't love something. There you go. Um, there are issues that I've had with members of my family in the past that have been horrible, um, that have 
hurt been painful um but i still love them i still recognize them as being um important to me on an emotional level and and i think that that outweighs and the understanding that those members of my family have and how their actions have impacted me I think that's important too. Understanding what what is it? It's I understand I did something wrong. Can you forgive me? So I think that that goes a long way towards um, accepting something. And there are a lot of people who have not been able to accept the changes in policy the 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 apologies from the country and uh i honestly no let's back up let's be honest there are some people who just can't accept israel no matter what okay um and my positivity isn't going to change that my positivity for the state of israel isn't going to change that um there are a lot of people like I have one person who's coming on and she works with Agunot. She's a writer and a blogger. She's tremendous. I'm so excited about having her as a guest. Um, and she works with Agunot. Now, Agunot are women who are chained women. They're women who cannot get a divorce. They can't get a get um, from their husbands because in Jewish how do I phrase this? Jewish marriage law. Um, we, uh, the man has to, uh, give his consent for divorce, which yes, it's absolutely archaic. Um, and in, in a perfect world, I don't know. I don't know in a perfect world. And hit me in the comments on this in a perfect world. Would he say, um, Yes, or in a perfect world, would it not be required? I don't know the answer to that. Um, so, because there has to be consensus on both sides. I think even in, in the legal world, you have to, uh, you can contest a divorce. So, um, but there should be, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to get into that right now. I'll get that in. I'll get into that with her. But she works with that, um, and she also works on advocacy for women who, what is going on? So basically what's going on in the Orthodox community, some of the Orthodox communities in Israel, is that they're erasing women from media. Um, and that's a big problem. That's insulting. Um, it's basically saying your you don't exist um they frame it as well we're protecting the beauty uh that's inherent in women um from the sexualization of women i i don't even i mean it, it's it, it show some self-control you know what i mean that's the bottom line um but my point for bringing these two things up and this guest that's coming up is that, yes, there are bad things in Israel. There absolutely are. But does that mean Israel's a bad place? No, not at all. Um, and I think by being able to air your dirty laundry, by being transparent about a place, I like this place. Yeah, but this place does that. I absolutely know they do. Um, but you have people like the guests that I have coming on who are advocates against that. And it's allowed. You have, oh my gosh, just about every week you have a rally um, in Tel Aviv or Jerusalem about some policy or something that someone's done. Um, recently they shut down Tel Aviv after the... Uh, the shooting of an young Ethiopian man by a police officer. Um, and these things happen. Does it mean Israel's a bad place? 
No, not at all. Um, does it mean that I don't love Israel? No, not at all. I cannot like things and still like a place. Um, there are places in the world that are bad. They're just bad places. They have bad laws. Um, they hate women. Uh, they hate their subjects. All of that. Um, Israel's not one of those places. So I am a positive podcast. I am, I am engaged in a positive. Is that even correct English? Um, this podcast is a positive podcast. Partially because we're willing to be transparent about the things that are happening. We're not. So there's a, uh, there's a phrase. Oh, I'm so glad I get to get to this. There is a phrase called Hasbara. And Hasbara was a program by the Israeli government to flower up um, the is basically to 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 demonize its enemies and lionize themselves. So basically, it's like normal political discourse now in the United States and in Israel. You're bad because you do this and support this. I'm great because I do this. Whereas, and 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 it was panned almost immediately. Now, I am not coming out to say that that program was bad. It was just ill-conceived, I want to say. And there are organizations that still use the name that are trying to resurrect the name and try to rebrand it as in a positive way. And it's... I'm going to say it's an uphill battle. But Hasbara is, in my opinion, personally, in my opinion, is blowing smoke. Don't blow smoke up my butt, okay? Sunshine, blowing sunshine. Um, because it is unwilling to address the faults. It always says... And I've, I've, I've read some of the literature. I've spoken to, to some of the people from the current Hasbara organizations. And the so Israel does this. Oh, we realize that. But we want to talk about this. That's not the appropriate. Um, le- that doesn't work. That doesn't work at all. Okay. Because the first thing it does is it shows that you are unwilling to address the issues that are inherent in whatever system you're working in. Okay. So if you're not willing to sit down and talk to the person who doesn't have the best opinion of Israel, then why should you be there talking about it? You're not being objective. Um, no, that's not right. You have the right to do that, but I think you lose credibility if you're unwilling to have that conversation. Uh, the person who wants to talk about Agunot, my guest who's coming on, that's, that's a horrible thing that's happening in the religious community. Um, a person who wants to talk about the erasure of women from media in the public sphere, that should be addressed. You can't make the statement that, well, we recognize that this is happening in Israel, but what, what we want to focus on is this instead. No, you can say that. You can say that if you follow it up with, and we will be looking into it and we will address it at X time. We, feel free to come and talk to us. You know what I mean? But if you stonewall, if you don't address these issues, your objectivity is lost. <sighs> so many issues, so many things, um, but there are so many good things. There are so many wonderful things. So we've spoken about a lot of negative things in a conversation about positivity. How did that happen? Well, I'm going to tell you how it happened uh, because... 
by addressing all of these things, all of these negative things, um, we're allowed to process them. We're allowed to see them. And as we see them, they become more manageable. If they're not addressed, they become unmanageable. If they're not addressed, they grow, they fester, we ruminate, and nothing occurs. And it always sits as an unaddressed negative stressor in our psyche. Ha! Ah, took me a while, but I got there. So if I address it, and I address it quickly, there's this really cool concept, um, the do it now mentality, and that's anything that you can do in five minutes, you should do it now. Uh, most people don't do it. I try to apply it um, as often as I can. So if I have something to do, like the dishes or whatever, um, I try to do it immediately. So if we started addressing these things, rather than trying to take positions of power in on these issues, well, I want to get more uh, leverage so that I have a better position in terms of this argument. If we stop worrying about that BS and started wor worrying about actually addressing things, and I mean everything, there would be more movement. We would leave so much more time for enjoying our lives wherever we were, but specifically in Israel. You know what I mean? Um, so, huh. Wow. That was, there was a lot to unpack there. Episode 12, man. Woo. You're heady. So yeah. So that's my, that's my basic thing. Um, in a nutshell, uh, if, if, if you address the negative and you give it, you give the negative this is important, not power, but attention. You will be able to address it and move on so that you can celebrate the positive things. Okay. Um, all right. That's pretty much, that's, that's it in a nutshell. Wow. Um, that probably wasn't it. I was probably way off. Somebody's going to be watching this and they're going to go, you're a bozo. Um, no, man, I love Israel. I love, I love it warts and all. Um, there are things about it that I don't like. Um, and there are things that I love. Um, but the things that I don't like don't make me not love it. They just make me want to fix it. Does that make sense? Uh, in, in, to the ability that I can, um, I'm also understanding that I can't fix everything. But that's pretty much it. Let me um, let me wrap this up and tell you about two things, uh, two organizations that I love. Because we're talking about positivity, I want to talk about two positive things that you can do, and that is help these two organizations. Um, the first one is Ale, and Ale helps children with complex disabilities receive state-of-the-art medical, educational, and rehabilitative care in Ale's four facilities. In addition, Ale provides thousands of outpatient treatments annually. Without Ale, many of these children would be forced to spend their lives in hospitals with no opportunities for rehabilitation, education, and the love and warmth of a home. Please visit www.ale.org. That's www.aleh.org and see if there's a way that you can help. These are beautiful, beautiful angels. Um, they are tremendous um, special needs individuals, and they need your help. So do what you can. Uh, check them out on Instagram and follow them. They are wonderful. Um, the next one is Schneider Children's Medical Center of Israel, which is the only comprehensive tertiary care hospital of its kind in the country and in the Middle East, offering the full range of pediatric disciplines under one roof to all children from 0 to 18. 
Since its establishment in 1991, Schneider Children's has revolutionized the practice of pediatric medicine in the country and has been recognized as one of the leading pediatric institutions in the world. To see what you can do for them, please visit www.schneider.org.il forward slash ENG. That is www.sch. N e i d e r dot o r g dot i l dot e n g. They are in Petatikva. You can see, actually, you can see them if you go on YouTube and check out Kululam, and uh, they have a video where they do a sing along at Schneider Children's Hospital. Uh, bring tissue because tears to your eyes. It's awesome. Um, and yeah, so that's two wonderful things that Israel does um, is they it seems like there is special care taken to take care of their special needs uh, members in their society. So um, all right, so that's that's pretty much it. We want to uh, I do need to tell you that we want to film again, we're going in January. We're going to film interviews, um, and we're going to, uh, at some point, I'd like to go, I wanted to go last summer. I couldn't raise the funds. I want to go this summer, uh, next summer. Um, and it costs about $50,000. Um, so I have set up on our website, you can donate uh, through our PayPal button. But listen, listen, listen. I only want you to donate two bucks. I figure if uh, if if twenty five thousand people get together, give me two bucks. That pays for airfare, uh, lodging, food because we have to pay for all of the food on travel shows. When they go to a restaurant, you pay for the food. Um, you don't expect it to come from the restaurant. Uh, we also have to pay for just all different kinds of stuff. I think I said transportation lodging all of that and it's for four people um for about seven weeks to do six episodes so if you can help us out uh again hit the uh go to web uh go to the website and hit the paypal button and if you could please give us two dollars really appreciate it all right thank you so much for joining us for the 12 cities in israel podcast don't forget to subscribe to our feed and become a part of the 12 cities in israel community you can find this podcast on soundcloud itunes google play stitcher tune in and spotify and we'll be bringing you a brand new podcast every week so keep your eyes out for that also to help support this podcast you can visit our patreon page and become a regular donor you can find that page at www.patreon.com forward slash 12 cities in Israel. That's 12 cities in Israel. One, two. Um, it's, it's up on the, uh, on the screen. If you're watching the video version of this, um, also please visit our YouTube channel where you can see a video version of this podcast, plus other videos that we have produced, including our full link travel episode on the city of Beersheva in southern Israel. While you're there, share it and subscribe. Check us out at our website, www.12citiesinisrael.com on our Facebook page and on Instagram where every day I post a brand new picture from our Israel travels. Check all of that out. All right. Toda ba. Lehitrot ve yala bye. Ali
Finale.